I want to speak to you today about the power of believing. One of the greatest abilities God has given us in this life, in this world, is the power to believe. There is incredible power in what we believe. The Apostle Paul speaks about this in Ephesians 1. He says, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. This is the key part. And he is incomparably great power for us who believe. Right now, God is incredible, incomparably great, exceedingly overwhelming power to release in your life today. But there is a condition. It's for us who, say it with me, believe. Last week I spoke about a story about a man named Jairus. Remember, he had a daughter, and his daughter got very ill. And Jesus got got kind of caught up on his way there to do the healing. And finally someone from the servants of the house of a man called Jairus comes to Jesus and they say, Oh, don't worry about bothering him, Master, because the little girl is dead. The daughter has died. So Jesus goes and he sees him weeping and crying. And this is what he says to him. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid. Just believe. And she will be healed. Everybody say those two words with me. Just believe. I need you to say that one more time. Just believe. Because those are the words I need you to get deep down in your spirit today. Just believe. When we seem overwhelmed with the problems and struggles of life, just like in the case of Jairus and his daughter, we sometimes face situations that are, that are so big that they seem over and done. They seem that we have no control over them. It sounds like that when we need to just believe. Maybe there's things in your life in the natural that look impossible. That you're facing a, a financial crisis that you just can't get over. Or it's an illness that you're struggling to, to get better by. Or it's an addiction that you're struggling to overcome. The words that you sink down deep today are those two words. Say it with me. Just believe. It's a power of believing that will change not only your mindset, but change your very course of your life because that's the time when God wants to release His incredible Power in your life. This is what happened to two sisters in the Bible. Their names are Mary and Martha. So if you have Bibles with you, you can look on the screen as we join you there about Mary and Martha and their power of believing. Can you join Sounds like I have all me now, Teddy. Ask God. Then Jesus said, but I'm not telling you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And you don't even listen. Sorry, of Mary and Martha sisters of their brother Lazarus. They live in the town of Bethany, which is not far from Jerusalem and Bethany. It's in that same area, same region. At this time in the story there, brother Lazarus is very sick, close to death. So they sent word to Jesus to come and heal him. And this time Jesus was in another place, actually it's an empty, also called Bethany, but on a little town on the east side of the Jordan River, about a day's journey from where Lazarus and his sisters were. So they sent a message down, it takes a day's journey to get there. When Jesus hears the message, that his friend Lazarus is sick. You expect him to jump up and get on his little donkey and go, but he doesn't. He waits there on purpose for two more days. Two days he waits and he doesn't do anything. On the third day, he looks at his disciples and he tells them, A brother Lazarus is asleep and we must go and awake him. Jesus was speaking about his death, but his disciples, they were a bit slow to catch on. And they said, Well, if you see him, well, he'll just get better. And Jesus, the Bible says, says plainly, Our brother Lazarus is dead. Let us go. So then, on that third day, they start taking the journey, which is another day's journey to get to, to Bethany, to where Lazarus is and his sisters. That's a four, day, four days and eight days. By the time Jesus gets there, to the outskirts of Bethany, Martha, the sister of Lazarus, comes running towards Jesus and says to him, Oh Lord, if you had just been here earlier, our brother Lazarus would not have died. Have you ever felt like that, that God just showed up too late sometimes? You know, you pray and believe but you didn't get the promotion. You, you pray, you believe, you quote the scriptures, you, you sit on God's promises, but still you got laid off, the accounting didn't work, the relationship didn't work out. And that's exactly how Mary and Martha felt. They felt discouraged, disappointed, depressed. 
a bit angry and bitter towards Jesus and God because he should have been there earlier. So Jesus says to them, well, take me to the place where you lay in. Martha, take me to the place where you said it's over and done, where nothing else can be done about this situation. Take me to the place where you, Martha, stop believing. So they go there to the place. And then Jesus says to her, uh, no, I'll get there. No, then Jesus says to her, if you just believe, you'll see my power in a great way. So you can imagine that they're there at the grave site, at the tomb of Lazarus. He's dead. In their natural mind, this was over and done. Nothing could have been done about it. Jesus should have got there earlier. He says, if you just believe. Remember those two words? Just believe. And this is what she says. Um, no, as he says, Martha said to him, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. We know that part. But this is the part I want you to get. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Those are the two next words that you need to get. Even now. Say it with me. Even yeah. now. Say it again. Even yeah. now. Yeah. Lord, if you'd just been our brother Lazarus, we'd, we'd still be alive. We wouldn't have died. But then he switches. He says, but even now, Lord, in the midst of the struggle and pain and torment that I'm going through, I still believe that you can make a way where I don't see a way. I still believe that God will do whatever you ask. I still believe that you can raise up Lazarus from the dead. I believe that in this church today, there's some people that need even now faith. Even now, in the midst of what I'm going through, I still believe that you can do it. You see, as Christians, we have two kinds of faith. Saving faith and daily faith. Saving faith is our faith that becomes Christians. We believe in God and we believe in His Son, Jesus Christ, and His death and resurrection. That's our say. All of us in this church have saving faith. You wouldn't be there if you didn't believe in God. But the part that we're lacking is daily faith. Daily belief. Because yes, we all believe in God, we come here and we worship Him, we love Him. But there's very few Christians that today actually believe that God can do something about your situation. That's what I'm talking about today. Not believing in God and who He says He is, but believing in God and what He can do in your life. That's what I need you to understand today. And that's a mindset that we need because of all the disappointments and setbacks and, and discouragement that we go through life. You know, every time that happens, every time something happens in our life, it kind of chips a little bit of our faith, doesn't it? We come, the, the next time, it's a struggle for us to believe in Him. So Christians, we, we live our life and we believe in God and that's fine, but over the course of time we get to the point where we just don't believe that God can do it. We never felt like that. That God, you, you can't work in my life. And no matter what it is, big or small, I don't think you can change the situation around. Even now. It's faith that says, God, in the situation I am, in the natural, it's impossible. I don't know how I'll ever overcome. I don't know how I'll get the victory. But even in the midst of the struggle, the storm, the sickness, the hurt, the pain, the disappointment, God, I believe you're a supernatural God. And even now, I believe that you can change the situation around. Amen. That's what I need you to get down to today. A belief that you can say, God, this is bigger than me. I can't do it, but I know that you can. I want that to sink down deep in the spirit now because some of us in this church are struggling with things and we can't seem to get over it because we, we just can't get to this point. We kind of given up already. When we leave the struggle or the war, we, we kind of just already give up. What I need you to do today is two words, just believe. Two words, even now. Say those four words with me. Just believe. Even now. What's interesting about this is when Jesus got there, he got there four days later, remember? The Sadducees, the religious leaders of the day, they believed that when you die, on the third day, your spirit leaves your body. All right, that's what their belief structure was. All the Jewish people believed that. What's interesting is, so they would still give you like the benefit of the doubt. If you come alive within those three days, that's all good, you know, we can understand that. But not on the fourth day, because your spirit's gone. There's no way you're going to come back alive. Jesus waited on purpose on the fourth day. Why? Just to show them up. In your face, said you see, I raised this man up not on the third day when you said it could happen. I raised him up on the fourth day because I wanted this to be so big that even you will believe. You see, when God works that miracle in your life, it's not only for the benefit of you, but for the benefit of those naysayers, those negative people. 
They were doubting whether it was that belief that you'll never overcome that addiction. That if your marriage will never get right. God will work such a miracle in your life and you just believe that even your naysayers, even those critics, will look at you and say, well, you know, I don't believe in God, but that seems like a miracle to me. Amen? That's what we need. We need miracles so big that even the people around us will look at us and say, you know, I never saw that coming. How did this ever happen? I don't believe in God, but that really seems like God works something in your life today. When Jesus got there, Mary and Martha were very disappointed. They were very discouraged, depressed. Lord, if you just been here sooner, uh, why couldn't you just come and heal Lazarus like we wanted, like we asked for? You see, sometimes our prayers are not what God wants in your life. See, God waited on purpose because He didn't have a yearling in store. He had something better. Let's be honest, a yearling is good, but raising a man from the dead, that is great. God has something much more better in store for them. Not only for them, but for all those people around them. When He raised Lazarus from the dead, He said this, Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? It kind of sounds like your mom when you were growing up. Did I not tell you not to shake that bottle of color before you got over there? Like my sons always do. Did I not tell you not to pick up your clothes in the bathroom after you shower? Now, this is not that kind of scolding one. This is a loving one. This is one where Jesus probably has a smile on his face. He said to Mother, didn't I tell you that if you just believe, you'd see my power in a great way? Didn't I tell you that if you just believe this would happen, all the people would be amazed? You know that the story is only found in John? John 11, that's it. This is the story of Lazarus. There's only one record in the universe that talks about this story. John 11. It's not found in any other gospels. And you'll be speaking about it today. Why? Because that's the power of the story. God has something much more great in store. If it was a healing, it would have been like all the other thousands of healings that Jesus done in his three and a half human ministry. But this was something different. This was something bigger. It was so big, recorded once, and yet we still speak about it 2,000 years later. Didn't I tell you that if you just believe? You've got to understand that in the weeks and months coming, whatever struggle you're in, you're going to hear that voice of Jesus whispering in your ear. Then he's going to say, didn't I tell you this? Linda, didn't, didn't I tell you that you'd see my glory? And you're going to think back to this message. And you're going to say, well, I really thought about that when Jesus said, didn't I tell you when the miracle happens? Didn't I tell you that you will see my glory and my power in a great way? Didn't I tell you that I can change the situation around? That's the faith we need in this church today. One of the greatest stories in the Bible for me personally, the story that happened in the Old Testament that took place with a man called Joshua. It's, in my view, one of the greatest miracles in the natural, physical world, even astronomical world. What happened is, after the Exodus, the, the 40 years of wandering the desert, Moses died and was buried by God. And then Joshua took over as the leader of the Israelites. And he moved across the Jordan River, and then there started to be a military conquest, a military campaign to conquer the promised land Canaan. And they started conquering cities by cities, like Jericho, Ai, and they started getting to all these cities conquering them. And then there's one little town of Gibeon, the Gibeonites lived there, and they thought, man, God is going to wipe us out, we've got to do something. So they ran to Joshua to make a peace treaty with him. Before he conquers and takes him, they said, Joshua, listen, you know, rather it can be on your side, we don't want any part to do with the rest of these people. So he done that. He said, no, it's fine. You can join us and you can be part of our Israelite group. What happened then was the five kings of Canaan. They didn't like it. So they formed an alliance and decided to attack Gibeon, the small little town of a couple of people. So they started to attack Gibeon because they sided with the Israelites. So immediately Gibeonites ran back to Joshua and said, Joshua, listen, these goats are coming against us. You better hold to your promise and protect us. Joshua, man of his word, a man of honor, decided he'll do that. He'll go and fight the five kings and all their armies, thousands of people. So what happened was the battle ensued, it went on for hour after hour, and eventually Joshua was actually winning the battle. He was gaining some good victory. But the sun was going down, and started to get dark. And he started to get worried because he knew that when the sun goes down, the fight stops, the battle ends, and all the people go back to their tents. And he's worried that they'll go and recuperate and they'll go and get more people to go and fight them. And then the tide of the battle may change the next day because then it might be outnumbered. And then at this moment, 
Joshua prays one of the craziest prayers I've ever heard in my life. This is what he says. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day that the Lord delivered up the Amorites, the five kings before the sons of Israel, and said in the sight of Israel, O son, stand still. O son, stand still and give the whole moon the valley of Ajuan. Son said, can you imagine him praying something like that? He could have prayed for anything. He could have prayed for locusts. Fire to He says he's been to the ten plagues. He could have caused anyone. But he went right from terrestrial earth and he threw up to the sun and said, God, this is what I need you to do. I want you to stop the sun in the sky. I don't know what level of prayers you had before God, but I don't think you've ever prayed one this big before. It was such a big, bold prayer that this is what the Bible says in the next verse. In Joshua 10 verse 14, there's never been a day like it before or since. Never been a day before or like A day when the Lord listened to a man. Have you ever heard those words before in life? When the Lord listened to a man, surely the Lord was fighting the Israel. The God listened to Joshua. Now let's be honest, God listens to all of us, doesn't he? Obviously. He hears your prayers and he answers you and he listens to all of us, all Christian believers all over the world. But this one's a little bit different in the context of the story. He listened to Joshua. It's almost like when Joshua said, Son stand still, I got the attention of God. And he moved forward on his phone. And he said, Did you guys hear that? Gabriel, Michael, did you hear what this guy was asking me for? He actually believes that I can stop the sun. I can, and I will. Just because it was such a big, bold prayer. Something totally out of this world. You know what? God done it for you. Now, as I said, I don't know what level of faith you have. If your prayers was big as the sun standing still, in my level, that is the tip. You don't get better than that in my eyes. So think about it. If Joshua prayed that the sun stands still, and then the arm on that's like the tip of the eyes, but that is, you don't get any greater miracle than that. Then all the prayers that you're asking for today, no matter what they are, the financial crisis, the illness, the, the help that you need, and the restoration of marriages and relationships, but whatever it is, is not as big as the sun standing still. So if God can make the sun stand still for Joshua, He can answer your prayers and He can break a miracle in your life today. Because nothing will ever be close to the sun standing still. And if God can do that miracle, He'll do it for you too. I believe right now, there's people in this church that's going to be God praying big, bold prayers to God. You're not going to be holding back no more. You're not going to be going through a struggle and thinking, oh, God, you're not going to do it anyway. No, no. You're going to be praying those prayers. God, make my marriage right. Give me the financial breakthrough. Give me the job. Give me the work. You're going to pray big, bold prayers like you've never prayed before. You know what's going to happen? God, right now in heaven, is going to sit on the edge of his seat and he's going to think, what is happening at St. Mark's today? These people are crazy, man. They are praying these prayers I've never heard of before. They are giving their prayers to me like I've never heard them pray before. Something must have happened in that church this morning. Something did happen. Some of you are going to start believing again. What I want to do is stir up your faith. And I want you to dare to believe again. Bless you. Just like with this man. God stopped the sun. Why? Because one man dared to believe that God could do it. I need that to be you today. I need you to believe that God can do it again. I believe that God can be the breakthrough you've been waiting for. The healing when you're sick. The strength when you're weak. The breakthrough when you're going through financial crisis. When you've lost something, or your relationship is torn apart, He's a God of restoration. When you've been hurt and treated unfairly, He's a God of vindication. What is God for you today? Is He the God of miracles? Is he the God that can do something in your life? I know many of us in this church, because all the trials and struggles we've been through, we've given up already. Today I want to be a new day. I want to not only believe that God is who he says he is, but God is the God who can do what he says he will do. And when you pray these big bold prayers, I believe and declare that God will reach down from heaven and start working in your life like you've never seen before. It's going to start with this couple of words. Just believe. Even now. I'm going to close with another verse from Ephesians. Um, we spoke about Ephesians 
one, the, 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 the important, the incomparable power of all those who believe. This is like a follow on. If you, if you, if you have a pain or if you've got a good memory, you really remember this verse. It's Ephesians 3.20. Everybody say it with me. Ephesians 3.20. This is what I call my power verse. It's a verse that's carried me through uh, everything, basically. And I'll read it to you. It, it, it says this. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. Forever and ever. To him, God, who is able to do immeasurably, say it with me, more than we can ask or imagine. There's another translation which is easy to remember. Same verse. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. That's easy to remember. And why? Because you need to say it with me. Four words. The first one. Exceedingly. Say it with me. Exceedingly. <laughs> abundantly. Above all. all. So the whole message today is those eight words. Just believe. Even now. Why? Because God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. And we don't believe that. But today we need to start believing. That there's nothing in your heart that God cannot do. He's still on the throne. He's still in control. He stopped the son for Joshua. He'll do the miracle that you've been praying for. Why? Because he'll do it exceedingly, abundantly, above all. That you can even think or imagine. But it's a condition. It starts with you. And your power of believing. Amen. 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 It's now